Hi there, thank you so much again for joining me on this channel. As always, I'm very grateful for all your previous views, likes, subscriptions and shares. I thought today we'd spend some time investigating the nativity, an important moment in the Christian tradition. And I did my favourite thing on Google and I looked up the origins of the word nativity and it comes from the Latin nativus, which means arisen by birth, because the nativity is all about the birth of Jesus. So where does it begin? Well, Christians, when looking at their holy book, the Bible, would go to the Old Testament and say, well, there's a prophet and a prophet is a messenger from God called Isaiah. And Isaiah said, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the young woman shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So centuries before the birth of Jesus, here is Isaiah predicting that Jesus will be born and he will be given the name Emmanuel and Emmanuel means God with us and that gives us a really interesting insight into the Christian faith because it's what Christians refer to as the incarnation an incarnation is when a person embodies in the flesh a deity or a spirit it is literally when God came walking on earth and Christians would say that Jesus is the son of God and therefore that is the incarnation and what's really interesting is when you start thinking about the incarnation in the light of other important Christian events so is the nativity the most important part of the Christian faith or is it the teachings of Jesus or is it his death is it his resurrection or is it his ascension and the reason why I wanted to raise this is because actually you can tell a lot about a faith from uh, what it perceives to be its most important events. Is it all of them? Is it a few? And it can also be really interesting to see how a religious tradition teaches within its own followers, its own believers. And that can give real insight. So when you're doing your own research and study, that's something you may want to consider. Anyway, we need to look at the Gospels. And there are four Gospels in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And the Gospels uh, mean good news in Greek and they tell us the story of Jesus. But they're not all the same. They're written by four different people. And we need to look at two because it's these two that tell us about the nativity. So first of all, there's Luke's Gospel. And Luke was a doctor. And there are two things I just wanted to focus on. First of all, John the Baptist and Secondly, the visit of the shepherds. Now, at the start of Luke, we are introduced to Zachariah and Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is Mary's sister, and she is part of a priestly family. So is her husband, Zachariah. And Zachariah and Elizabeth do not have any children. And an angel appears to Zachariah and says, well, Elizabeth is going to have a baby. Zachariah is actually struck dumb by the event. And of course, that baby goes on to be John the Baptist, who goes on to actually, of course, baptise Jesus in Matthew chapter 3. But it's really interesting, isn't it, how you have Mary and Joseph, an encounter with an angel, and Zachariah and Elizabeth, an encounter with an angel. And it's just interesting, isn't it? So to have two sisters in that same position, uh, having those divine revelations. And of course, you can also compare, if you want to, the reaction of Joseph and Mary and Zachariah and Elizabeth. But the second thing I just wanted to highlight was, of course, as we know in the nativity story, Mary and Joseph and Jesus were visited by the shepherds. And as we know, the angels, a heavenly choir, told the shepherds that Jesus was there in a manger. But what's interesting is why shepherds? Why tell them? Well, there's a couple of ideas floating around. And of the two that I was able to, I think, really wanted to underscore was that, first of all, shepherds were ordinary people. And I think that tells us something about how uh, Christians view Jesus, that his birth was for everybody, all inclusive. I think the second thing as well is that shepherds were responsible for looking after sheep, spookily enough. And sheep were often sacrificed at the temple. And maybe that's a picture to come of Jesus being a sacrifice, uh, not just in terms of being nailed to the cross, but also his life of service and putting others ahead of his own interest. 
Another gospel which gives us lots of information on the nativity is that of Matthew. And Matthew was a former tax collector. And he starts his gospel with a huge family tree that can literally trace back uh, Jesus' uh, sort of family all the way back to Abraham, that great patriarch, uh, and also includes King David. But in his version of the nativity, we have the visit of the Magi, the wise men. And what's really fascinating is this, is that, of course, they bring those gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And by the way, it doesn't actually tell you how many Magi there are. It's just become assumed that there were three because there were three gifts. But what do these gifts symbolise? Well, first of all, there's gold and gold is symbolic with royalty, divinity. And I think that shows you that Jesus is the son of God and regarded so by Christians. Secondly, you have frankincense and frankincense was an incense that was burnt, particularly in temples, sweet smelling. And it highlights uh, Jesus's uh, divinity, that as the son of God. Uh, I also like to, it also hints at the fact that he's from, uh, uh, you know, priestly family going back to Zachariah and Elizabeth. And of course, the third thing that was brought was myrrh. And myrrh is associated with death and the death rituals at the time. You might even be buried with some myrrh. And of course, that points to the death of Jesus. So three very interesting gifts that, uh, of course, you wouldn't normally bring a baby. But of course, this is no ordinary baby. And I think the other thing that's really interesting as well is that when you are uh, looking at the story of the nativity in the Gospel of Luke and the Gospel of Matthew, it's a little exercise that I uh, like to do. You may just want to get a bit of paper and then bring up on Bible Gateway Matthew and Luke and just draw a little chart uh, in the margin. Star, shepherds, donkey, major. Think of all the things that appear in the nativity story and then read Matthew, read Luke and then put a little cross when these things appear. So when you see star, put a little cross. When you see donkey, put a little cross. Uh, this is just for illustrative purposes, because actually it's fascinating how the understanding of the nativity today has become so mythologized, been put on so many Christmas cards. It's many ways, it's actually quite far removed from what is there in the gospels. Anyway, as always, I'm very grateful for your time. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, enjoy your learning. Thank you.